Hi everyone, today I want to talk about type inference. Um, so there's a embarrassingly long-running patch uh, that I'm working on in GHC for killing derived. So there's these all these different kinds of constraints floating around in GHC and there's these derived constraints. I don't like them and I'm trying to get rid of them um, because they're confusing and they add a lot of code and yeah, I think we can live without them. Um, anyway, uh, recently I've been joined uh, by my intern uh, at Twig, Sam Darbyshire, also goes by Sheaf online, and, and he and I have been trying to really figure out what are the, the last remaining to-dos on this patch. It's, it's so close, but we're not quite there. And we discovered along the way that actually there's a bug today. It's not even in our patch, although it gets worse in our patch. Um, but it's a bug today about GHC inferring non-principal types. Um, so this is very interesting. So, so today's video is going to explore what is a principal type, and then when does GHC not get it right? Um, and this has existed today and probably for the last 15 years or something like that. So it's, it's, it's always fun to find new holes to fall into. Um, so, so first, let me explain what do I mean by, by a principal type. So, so let's say I want to write a function frobble here, and frobble is going to take an x, and what will frobble do? Uh, if x is 3, then... Um, oh, show, I don't know, x less than 5, I guess that will always be true, but else we're going to show x, x plus 1, something like that. Now, if I type that in, uh, GHC accepts my program, and we can actually ask what type GHC has inferred for Frobble. And here is its type. Um, so there's a lot going on behind the scenes in order to get that type out of GHC and, and for GHC to be able to infer that at all. Um, so one thing that it has to do is it has to tell, okay, so here we have x equals 3. Well, that means that x has to be a number, right? Because I know that the, I know the type of equals, and I know that both sides of equals has the same, have the same type. Both sides have the same type. Um, and so that means that 3 has to have the same type as x. But if x has some unknown type a, then that means that that unknown type really has to be a number type. So we get num a. Then because I've used equals here, then I also get eek a. We need to have a member of the eek. A needs to be in the eek type class. Over here, this shows a bool. This is always going to be a bool, but I've compared x against something else. Um, and so here when I've done that, that means I need the ord constraint. So now I, we need num a and eek a and ord a so far. And then over here, now I'm showing a list that contains x's. So now I also need show of list of a. But we don't see all of these constraints listed in the, in the inferred type for Frobble. Um, and that's because GHC does some simplification. So it knows, for example, that ORD A, or rather EK is a superclass of ORD A. So that means that if we have ORD A, that always implies EK. So we don't need to write the EK out here. So we can leave that bit out. And GHC also knows that in order to prove show list of A, show A is sufficient. So it simplifies instead of saying show list of A, which is kind of a strange thing to include, it just says show A. And so we get this type out of Frobble. Um, and what I mean by principal type is it means that any time this expression over here is allowed, uh, that I can be that I can write frobble x, and they will they, they they will sort of work in all of the same places. This is another way of saying it is that this is the most general possible type for frobble. I can write another type for frobble here. I could say that frobble goes from int to string. And that's perfectly acceptable. But this type for Frobble is not the most general type, right? Because if I say y is an integer, and let's say y is 4, um, then I, if I say result equals Frobble y, I'm going to get a type error. And the type error is that I can't match int with integer. Yet, if I leave out my type signature, all is now well, because this, this my most general type for Frobble means that whenever I can possibly use that right-hand side, I'm, gonna, I'm allowed to use Frobble. Um, so this is a very good thing, and this idea of principal type powers all of type inference. If, if, if the type system didn't have principal types, if we didn't have this notion, then we would be back in the world where we have to write out types for everything. Um, so in fact, in more complex type systems, we don't have principal types, and that's why those other languages require you to write types. But in Haskell, uh, at least among sort of simplish Haskell, we do have these principal types. It means we can avoid a lot of type signatures, which is really nice. Um, okay, so that's the idea behind principal types. Um, and let's see now. Um, 
what do we want to do next? So um, we want to show exactly how GHC might not include a printable type. So we're going to leave Frobble alone. And now Frobble is, is, is nice without a type signature. Um, and instead, oh, let's look at Wurble. Um, so Wurble, well, we need some classes before we get to Wurble. So we're going to invent a class C A. And we're going to have class D A. Um, and I would like to have an instance that says instance C A implies D A. Oh, D A is going to need a method. So we're just going to have we're lowercase d. Um, actually, I'll name it something more um, uh, uh, inspiring here. D I'll pronounce that default. Of course, I can't use default. That's a keyword in Haskell. Uh, but I'll pronounce that default. So we have a default method uh, in DA. And we're going to have instance CA implies DA, where I really don't care what this is, but I don't want an error. Um, I don't want a, a warning from this. OK, so now I already have a problem. Illegal instance declaration. I need a flexible instance. So let's turn that on. Um, and now, I yes, I need undecidable instances. And that's because GHC generally likes, oops, I can spell, right? Um, uh, GHC generally likes constraints on instances to be smaller than the instance head. But here, they're the same size. Um, so we have, uh, oh, did I still not spell it right? Undecidable, decidable. There we go. Um, OK, so, so I have this little setup here. And now I'm going to write Wurble. And Wurble, I'm going to say Wurble equals default. default. Um, and that's going to trigger the monomorphism restriction. So let's turn off the monomorphism restriction. I think I have another video about that. Um, but I spelled it poorly again. Monomorphism restriction. OK. So this compiles. All is well. Let's look at the type of Warble. So the type of Warble, it takes a CA. We need a CA to be true, and then it will produce an A. The problem is this is actually not the most general type for Warble. And we can see this here in, um, oh, I'm out of fun names. Foo, if I say foo has type DA arrow A, and I type foo equals Warble, I get an error saying that I could not deduce C of A. That's because a use of Warble, according to my inferred type for Warble, let me add that here as a comment, Warble. It's type C A R O A. According to my inferred type for Wurble, I need to be able to satisfy a C constraint. Here, in the context of foo, all I have is D. And so when I call Wurble, I get an error. This violates my idea of principal type, right? So before I said, oh, a principal type is whenever I can just sort of use the right hand side and it works out. So if I type default here, now I get OK, one module loaded. Um, we do get this very telling warning. Um, about a simplifiable class constraint, right? Because GHC really wants me to write CA here instead of DA because CA implies DA. Uh, but maybe I haven't done that for various reasons. Um, and uh, But in any case, this module compiles without, uh, um, excuse me, if I use Wurble, on the other hand, it won't. And that's because I have inferred something other than a principal type. And so this has existed for a long time. We see that this comes here from flexible instances and undecidable instances. So you might say, oh, well, you know, those are, those are sort of strange extensions, where undecidable instances is, is a bit strange. But it turns out that we can do this um, in other ways, too. We can run into trouble in other ways. So let me show another case where we have a non-principal type. Um, let's see. I'm going to do it up here so that we can see it all on the screen. And this is related to Frobble. So earlier I said it had a principal type. But I lied. It doesn't really have a principal type. So I'm going to call this use frobble. Um, I'm going to say that use frobble has the type, what do we need? We need num a ord a eek, or not eek, um, uh, show list of a, a arrow string, and then use frobble equals frobble. And now if I try to compile this, we're going to have a type error. Oh, we're going to have a type error because I'm missing flexible contexts. So let's, we want to see all of this new stuff in action. Let's comment all of this stuff out down here. Um, and it still wants flexible contexts, but I'm pretty sure we don't need that anymore, that very strange and scary looking extension. Um, here, now we don't have that problem, but could not deduce show A from arising from a use of Frobble. 
Okay, so that kind of makes sense, right? Because I said that to use Fraba, we needed to have the show A constraint. Here, I don't know that show A is true. All I know is show list of A is true. And yet, if I take this code here and write it, oh, now I'll need the Fraba X, use Fraba X, and I write this over here. Now when I compile, okay, one module loaded. So it turns out that Fraba indeed does not have a principal type. And that's because the type inferred for Fraba right, has a show A constraint, really it should have a show list of A constraint. The problem is, is that I said earlier that there was a lot of work that GHC does in order to infer a good type. Well, in general, I want show A constraints, not show list of A constraints. So in the process of inferring a type, GHC will simplify that type. It turns out though that sometimes that's wrong. So we really saw that more glaringly here with Werbel. Right? With Warble, I really wanted a DA constraint here, not a CA constraint, but GHC helpfully simplified my type to CA, giving me a non-principal type. So what do we do here? How do we want to fix this? We could say, it would not be hard from an implementation point of view, don't do this and just infer exactly the constraints that the user needs. In, in this case, Frobble would get a type that looks much more like use Frobble's type. Um, with the show list of a constraint. I think that would make a lot of people unhappy though, right? Because they want simpler constraints and easier to understand types. And so there's this tension here. And in the end, we're going to go with, with the current, we're not going to make this change. The, the, the change is going to be document the problem in the manual, don't fix. Because we do want these nice simpler types um, uh, when, uh, when inferring types. So one, one other interesting thing that, that I, I want to call out here is that this final program here, it's using, I don't even think it's using flexible instances. I think it's just using, I don't even think it's using no, no monomorphism restriction. It's just about flexible contexts. Um, this issue with use Frobble and, and Frobble. So here, if I change this back to Frobble X, then now it fails because of a lack of a principal type. But it's only because I can write flexible contexts. So sometimes people say, ah, oh, why don't we just re-standardize? Why don't we have, you know, um, instead of GHC 2021, why don't we have Haskell 2021, where we get to standardize all of these nice extensions, including things like flexible contexts and flexible instances, which are generally seen as innocent. Well, it turns out that they're not so innocent. Because we have flexible contexts, it actually means that GHC doesn't infer principal types with respect to flexible contexts. Does, what does that mean we should do? Should we then formalize all of this? Well, maybe, but we're going to have to lose some things to do it. So it turns out that getting things right once we start increasing the power of our type system is a little bit hard. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting for you. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.